Hello, my name is Abid Mahmoud, presenting for my assignment one for my uh, subject, writing for multi multimedia. My program is Bacheloring in Design and Animation. My ID number is 0120-200-20217. Okay, so the two approved movies, uh, live action movie was Soul Ragnarok. It's Marvel Avengers movie. It's a third sequel for Soul. And How to Train Your Dragons, The Hidden World, as an animated movie. It's also the third sequel for the series. First, we start with So Ragnarok. Uh, this is the official poster. Main character, the most important one, is Soar. His sister, the main villain, Hela. Uh, Bruce Banner, or, Hull, or widely known as Hulk, the big green guy. And uh, Suter, which is another main villain, which is created by motion capture. We have six supporting characters. We have Doctor Strange, which is another Marvel superhero. Loki, which is Thor's brother, adopted brother actually. Uh, Heimdall, which is supporting character from Asgard, the city that Thor's father rules. And we have uh, Valkyrie, uh, Valkyrie, which is a warrior from Asgard also. And uh, Scourge, the executioner. Impact of character options. Thor uh, is a true son of Odin, which is supposed to be a god in the Nordic methodology. He's the ruler of Asgard, protector of nine realms. So you can see this in his son, Thor. He may seem funny, but when he takes decisions, uh, he's real tough on himself. He cares a lot for the surrounding. He may like put himself in I'm going to die situations just to save everyone he loves. For the plot, I will talk about it. The movie starts with him being trapped uh, by the main villain, the Dark Fire One, and he gets free and he kills him. He goes back to Asgard. He finds he didn't find his father, he finds his brother uh, doing some magic to look like his father. Anyway, they go on, they try to find the father. The father turned talk to him about his sister Hela, which she is like a real demon. And she was locked away for centuries, and now he's going to die, she will be freed. So he uh, and his father tells him that the only way to that she dies, that the prophecy goes and the dark fire uh, monster destroys all of Asgard. Then he gets kidnapped and he goes to a tribune, uh, like shitty planet, where there's like a king of this planet. Uh, they just fight each other for his pleasure. So he puts him in a fight with his most beloved Hulk, but Hulk was like in the Hulk mood, not Bruce Wayne mood. So he was like, I'm gonna kill you. But later after some time, he like uh, could get uh, Hulk uh, conscious back. And now he goes into his mission. He goes back to his uh, planet, Asgard. He fights with his sister. He puts the prophecy. He gets this dark fire monster. He puts him in something like uh, it's called the, the, the live fire, which Odin has. And he destroys the city. And while he's destroying the city, that kills Hela. Because Hela is like getting his powers from the core of Asgard. And then he takes all of Asgardians and go to Earth so they can live there. We have multiple conflicts during the movie. After he defeats the demon, he knows about the prophecy, which then he comes back to his world to find that his dad is missing. Second one, when he goes to Norway to look for his father, his father told him about his sister Ella that he didn't know about. Third one, when he goes to Asgard, uh, Hela slaughters all the Asgardian army. Fourth conflict is when he's trapped in this city planet with the Grand Master, who rules it and makes like a uh, sword, fights everyone for his own pleasure. Uh, fifth one is when he fights his most beloved friend Hulk. Sixth is when he calls upon the guardian of the Bifrost, it's like a connect a connection between worlds, so he can transfer him. And he, like, Heimdall is not his hair. He can see through Heimdall's eye, but he can see the destruction his sister is doing. 
uh, for climax elements. Uh, Sir finally discovers his truly kingly powers and his biggest lightning bolt that he can do and kill everyone, uh, which helped him to make sure that all the Asgardians survived. He realized also that the only way to defeat Hela is to cause the Ragnarok, which is a prophecy, and to destroy Asgard, her source of power, while he holds her off, which he already did. Uh, for resolution on escaping ship, Thor must face the consequences of his decision to destroy his home planet, as well as finally accept the responsibilities of being king. We have multiple reviews I got from IMDb. Most of them are positive, 9 or 10 out of 10. They like the way, like, they did the movies, the animations, the CGI, uh, and so it's like a good film, even for children. No 18 plus stuff, no violence, no porno, no anything. It's just a straight up good and fantastic movie. For technology applied, uh, first of all, the Asgard cities, they built it, constructed it from zero. They had more than 9,000 buildings. They did it all like visual effects, 3D animation, 3D world. Here's a photo we can see. And then most of the movies, like most of superheroes movie, it's CGI, visual effects. You have a blue or green clothes and you just apply your environment. Here we can see a lot of this. I have some examples. And then for the summary, <clears throat> it's pretty much like how the plot is going. Uh, he knows about prophecy. They go and they know about their sister Hela, uh, who their father uh, imprison imprisoned in hell. She's the goddess of death and hell also. Her exile would end when Odin dies. Loki and Thor try to escape from Hela and they land at Sakaar, the weird planet. And he meets there a uh, Valkyrie, uh, Valkyrie. She's an Asgardian. She helps him after like some time. She trusts him and helps him. Then they all go, come together and they go and they free Asgard. Uh, actually, they destroy Asgard. But they reach, like, I, I like the movie. As summary, it's so well built movie around the idea of Thor being the son of Odin. It's a really, really well built idea regarding this matter. It's an enjoying fun. The narrative in the movie is great. The visuals are superb. Uh, this is mainly the whole part. For we go the second movie, How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. Uh, here's a poster. This is the animated movie. We have main characters, Hiccup, the main hero, Astrid, his friend, girlfriend, soon to be wife, and the most second important character after Hiccup. A grimmer is a grizzly, which is a dragon hunter. And he's coming to kill the dragons. Uh, to slit the Night Fear Dragon, which is Hiccup's own dragon. We have supporting characters, Valka, Gooper, Fishlegs, Not Loud, Toughnut, Roughnut, Eret, which are all friends and helpers of the main hero, Hiccup. The main hero is, was the son of the chief of Berk, the town they live in. They are Vikings. And he took uh, over the rule after, he fell, after his father die, died. He may seem childish, but he's driven by care and love for people and dragons and everyone, every human being. He always tried the best for them, even if it's heartbreaking for him. As we can see when he decided to let Toothless and the dragons go just to protect them from humans, his actions are always for the best of his surrounding, which gave us a great movie suitable for kids to learn care and love from. For the plot, I'll go through it. So uh, it starts with him being the chief, he notices like as uh, they have like overcrowd of dragons in the city. So they try to find like the hidden place, which his father told him about. It's like the heaven of dragons. They try to go and find it, but then uh, his toothless, his dragon, meets a female of his of his kind, which is rare. There's only two alive in the world. So they like get, get in love. And the owner of this female is the dragon hunter. He released the female just to grab the attention of Toothless. So now he's trying to get the Toothless to kill him, to capture him and kill him. So uh, they go on their journey trying to find the hidden land. Mid journey, they meet this dragon hunter. They had a fight. Uh, he captured Toothless and they managed to free him. And they had a fight and Hiccup managed to win it. 
And lastly, they went to the, the heaven city of dragons. They left the dragons. And they went back to their island with no dragons and swear to keep the dragons as a secret. Uh, a decade later, Toothless and Light Fury have made it, given birth to three hybrid dragons called Night Lights, Hiccup, Astrid, uh, and their two children. They sail across the sea to visit them at the edge of the hidden world after introducing his son and daughter to his old friend. Hiccup and Astrid take their children flying on Toothless and Stormfly, accompanied by the Light Fury, which is a female uh, Toothless, and their offspring. Hiccup vows that until humankind is ready to coexist peacefully with dragons, dragons will stay hidden while the, park, uh, the, park, the Perkins guard their secret. We have like a real, like one or two conflicts. Uh, while the dragon riders are far from perfect, they have become fairly efficient at rescuing dragons from hunters and providing a safe place that they have like overpopulation of dragons. Hiccup is a leader, she has to do something, so he considered to go and he, like find this hidden world, but he meets Grimmel the Grizzly, which is a dragon hunter. Uh, and the story goes uh, for the climax, we have like Grimmel brings his captured dragons to the warlords, but he tells them that he plans to kill Toothless for himself, denying them the chance to have him for themselves. The heroes then swoop into free their dragons and take on Grimmel's army. They manage to steer the dragon trapper ships towards each other, causing the trappers to abandon ship as they all sing. Grimmel attempts to kill Hiccup, but he managed to free Toothless. Grimmel takes the Light Fury to the sky, leading Hiccup and Toothless to chase after them. The Death Grippers, which are Grimmel's grizzly dragons, fly in and surround Toothless until he harnesses his lightning power. He has lightning powers and electrocutes them all before vanishing. He appears before Grimmel and Hiccup jumps toward him. Grimmel tranquilizes Toothless, sending him falling into the ground. Hiccup tackles the villain and frees the Light Fury. The female Toothless order her to save Toothless as Hiccup and the Grimmel fall in the sky. The Light Fury catches Toothless and lands with him on a cliff. Grimmel tears Hiccup's sweat apart, but the Light Fury flies toward Hiccup. He loosens his prosthetic foot. He has a prosthetic foot, sending Grimmel uh, to his watery grave as the Light Fury catches Hiccup. Resolution the Perkins celebrate the victory until Hiccup realizes it's time to let Toothless go. He bids his best friends farewell and the two embrace cheerfully and other Perkins must then say goodbye to their beloved dragons. We have multiple reviews ranging from 6 to 10. Mostly they see it like a cool light movie, not something with a lot of uh, conflicts, a lot of like it's not grabbing attention always, sometimes it's slow. But overall it's a good and lovely movie. It's a 3D animated movie. It's not like visual effects. It's more like 2D animated films uh, in a way, but it's much better. It supports ray tracing. They had a lot of lightning. A magical, like, magical lightning is the wonderful job. We can see like here. Uh, the female light fury dragon and black toothless for challenges to light. Even in 3D animation, even light you have to factor in. The Black Knight Fury has shiny skin, but Light Fury has an earthiness that shines when light hits her. Subtle muscles were used to make Toothless shine more. It was a pretty, like, we had 55 animators with seven supervising animators working on this, on only the main characters to do it. For the summary, the closing, uh, the narrative element really finds Equally impressive footing, while Toothless is cozying up to the first female of his species he has ever seen, Hiccup is similarly trying to figure out his relationship with his crush Astrid, under pressure from a village that expects to uh, has them to marry. All of Hidden World looks impressive, the initial return to Perk, now a tutoring metropolis of brightly colored buildings absolutely crammed with equally brightly colored dragons, is an impressive showcase for how ambitious and wild CG animation has become. Every frame of the film that set in Berk is distractingly busy with neon shades and independent movement, with the new architecture and wildly designed life for viewers content to just lean back and let the film wash over them. There is plenty of beauty here, some of it downright of striking. I really like this movie. And this is all for my 
I'll sign in Glenn. Thank you so much for listening.